The Andaman Sea, historically also known as the Burma Sea, is a marginal sea of the eastern Indian Ocean separated from the Bay of Bengal to its west by the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and touching Myanmar, Burma, Thailand, and the Malay Peninsula. Its southernmost end is defined by Brua Island, an island just north of Sumatra. Traditionally, the sea has been used for fishery and transportation of goods between the coastal countries and its coral reefs and islands are popular tourist destinations. The fishery and tourist infrastructure was severely damaged by the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami. Geography <inaudible> 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 The Andaman Sea, which extends over 92 e to 100 e and 4 n to 20 n, occupies a very significant position in the Indian Ocean, yet remained unexplored for a long period of time. To the south of Myanmar, west of Thailand, and north of Indonesia, this sea is separated from Bay of Bengal by the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and an associated chain of sea mounts along the Indo-Burmese plate boundary. The Strait of Malacca between Malay Peninsula and Sumatra forms the southern exit way of the basin, which is 3 km wide and 37 m deep. The International Hydrographic Organization defines the limits of the Andaman or Burma Sea as follows On the southwest. A line running from Ojong Raja 5 degrees 32 and 95 degrees 12 e in Sumatra to Polo Bras Brua and on through the western islands of the Nicobar Group to Sandy Point in Little Andaman Island, in such a way that all the narrow waters appertain to the Burma Sea. On the northwest. The eastern limit of the Bay of Bengal a line running from Cape Negre 16 degrees 03. In, in Burma Myanmar, through the larger islands of the Andaman group, in such a way that all the narrow waters between the islands lie to the eastward of the line and are excluded from the Bay of Bengal, as far as a point in Little Andaman Island in latitude 10 degrees 48 n, longitude 92 degrees 24 e. On the southeast. A line joining Lem Voelan 7 degrees 47 in, in Siam, Thailand, and Pedro Punt, five degrees forty. N in Sumatra. Topic Geology. Topic. The northern and eastern side of the basin is shallow, as the continental shelf off the coast of Myanmar and Thailand extends over two hundred kilometers, marked by three hundred meters isobath. About 45% of the basin area is shallower, less than 500 meters depth, which is the direct consequence of the presence of the wider shelf. The continental slope which follows the eastern shelf is quite steep between 9n and 14n. Here, the perspective view of the submarine topography sectioned along 95e exposes the abrupt rise in depth of sea by about 3000 meters within a short horizontal distance of a degree. Isobathes corresponding to 900 meters and 2000 meters are also shown in the figure to emphasize the steepness of the slope. Further, it may be noted that the deep ocean is also not free from seamounts, hence only around 15% of the total area is deeper than 2500 meters. The northern and eastern parts are shallower than 180 meters, 590 feet due to the silt deposited by the Irrawaddy River. This major river flows into the sea from the north through Myanmar. The western and central areas are 900 to 3,000 meters (3,000 to 9,800 feet) deep. Less than 5% of the sea is deeper than 3,000 meters (9,800 feet), and in a system of submarine valleys east of the Andaman-Nicobar Ridge, the depth exceeds 4,000 meters (13,000 feet). The sea floor is covered with pebbles, gravel, and sand. The western boundary of Andaman Sea is marked by volcanic islands and seamounts, with straits or passages of variable depths that control the entry and exit of water to Bay of Bengal. There occurs a drastic change in depth of water over a small distance of 200 km, as one moves from Bay of Bengal around 3, meters deep to the vicinity of islands up to 1,000 meters depth and further into the Andaman Sea. The exchange of water between the Andaman Sea and the Bay of Bengal occurs through the straits formed between the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Out of these, the most important straits in terms of width and depth are, Preparis Channel PC, 10 Degree Channel TDC, and Great Channel GC. PC is the widest but shallowest 250 meters of the three and separates South Myanmar from North Andaman. TDC is 600 meters deep and lies between Little Andaman and Kar Nicobar. 
GC is 1,500 meters deep and separates Great Nicobar from Banda Aceh. Topic: <inaudible> Ocean floor tectonics. Topic: Running in a rough north-south line on the seabed of the Andaman Sea is the boundary between two tectonic plates, the Burma Plate and the Sunda Plate. These plates or microplates are believed to have formerly been part of the larger Eurasian plate, but were formed when transform fault activity intensified as the Indian plate began its substantive collision with the Eurasian continent. As a result, a back arc basin center was created, which began to form the marginal basin which would become the Andaman Sea, the current stages of which commenced approximately 3 to 4 million years ago Ma, the boundary between two major tectonic plates results in high seismic activity in the region see list of earthquakes in Indonesia. Numerous earthquakes have been recorded, and at least six, in 1797, 1833, 1861, 2004, 2005, and 2007, had the magnitude of 8.4 or higher. On 26 December 2004, a large portion of the boundary between the Burma Plate and the Indo-Australian Plate slipped, causing the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake. This megathrust earthquake had a magnitude of 9.3. Between 1,300 and 1,600 kilometers of the boundary underwent thrust faulting and shifted by about 20 meters, with the sea floor being uplifted several meters. This rise in the sea floor generated a massive tsunami with an estimated height of 28 meters 92 feet that killed approximately 280,000 people along the coast of the Indian Ocean. The initial quake was followed by a series of aftershocks along the arc of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The entire event severely damaged the fishing infrastructure. Topic: Volcanic activity. Topic: Within the sea, to the east of the main Great Andaman Island group, lies Barren Island, the only presently active volcano associated with the Indian subcontinent. This island volcano is 3 kilometers (2 miles) in diameter and rises 354 meters above sea level. Its recent activity resumed in 1991 after a quiet period of almost 200 years. It is caused by the ongoing subduction of the India Plate beneath the Andaman Island Arc, which forces magma to rise in this location of the Burma Plate. The last eruption started on 13 May 2008 and still continues. The volcanic island of Narkandam, which lies further north, was also formed by this process. No records exist of its activity. Climate The climate of Andaman Sea is determined by the monsoons of Southeast Asia. The wind system over the regime reverses every year. The region experiences north-easterlies with an average wind speed of 5 meters per second in the months of November to February. During these months, the western part of the domain experiences maximum wind intensity. It weakens by March to April and reverses to strong southwesterlies from May to September, with mean wind speeds touching 8 meters per second in June, July and August, distributed nearly uniformly over the entire basin. The wind plummets by October and switches back to northeasterlies from November. Air temperature is stable over the year at 26 degrees Celsius in February and 27 degrees Celsius in August. Precipitation is as high as 3,000 mm per year and mostly occurs in summer. Sea currents are south-easterly and easterly in winter and south-westerly and westerly in summer. The average surface water temperature is 26 to 28 degrees Celsius in February and 29 degrees Celsius in May. The water temperature is constant at 4.8 degrees Celsius at the depths of 1,600 m and below. Salinity is 31.52 parts per thousand in summer and 30.0 to in winter in the southern part. In the northern part, it decreases to 20 to due to the inflow of fresh water from the Irrawaddy River. Tides are semidiurnal i.e., rising twice a day with an amplitude of up to 7.2 meters. The effect of wind stress on ocean surface is explained with the help of wind stress curl. The net divergence of water in the ocean mixed layer results in Ekman pumping. The comparison between the two seasons elicits a very strong negative pumping velocity of more than 5 meters per day along the north coast of Indonesia from May to September shown here, June. This signifies a probable tendency of coastal downwelling in summer. 
It is also observed that the region develops a weak but positive pumping velocity less than 3 meters per day at the mouth of GC in winter here, December. <laughs> Fluid dynamics, circulation, transport and waves Generally, currents are found to be stronger in the south than any other part of the basin. An intense surface outflux through GC, of the order of 40 cm per second, occurs during summers and winters. While this flow is directed westwards in winter, it is southwards along the west coast of Indonesia in summer. On the other hand, the TDC has strong surface influx in summer, which weakens by October. This is followed by a sturdy outflux in winter, which wanes by the month of April. Although the surface flow through PC is generally inward during summer monsoon, the preceding and succeeding months experience outflow strong outflow in October, but weak outflow in April. During April and October, when the effects of local winds are minimal, Andaman Sea experiences the intensification of meridional surface currents in the poleward direction along the continental slope on the eastern side of the basin. This is characteristic of the propagation of Kelvin waves. It is observed that the water level rises in the basin between April and November with the maximum rate of piling up of water during April and October marked by steep slope of the curve. The rise in sea surface height SSH is attributed to the following, rainfall, fresh water influx from rivers, and inflow of water through the three major straits. Except the last factor, the contributions from rainfall and rivers are quantifiable and are hence expressed in volumes of water for comparison. From this, the expected influx through straits equals SSH anomaly, rainfall, river influx could be deduced. Here, the evaporative losses are not accounted for owing to its diminutive order of magnitude compared to precipitation. Previous studies show that the annual mean freshwater gain precipitation minus evaporation of Andaman Sea is 120 cm per year. It is found that the SSH of the basin is primarily dictated by the transport of water through the straits. The contributions from rainfall and rivers become substantial only during summers. Hence, a net inward flow occurs through the straits between April and November, followed by net outward transport till March. The basin experiences very high rate of transport of water through straits in April and October. This is a period of equatorial work key jets, which hit the coast of Sumatra and reflects back as Rossby waves and coastal Kelvin waves. These Kelvin waves are guided along the eastern boundary of Indian Ocean and a part of this signal shall propagate into Andaman Sea. And the northern coast of Sumatra is the first to sense its effect. The 20-degree isotherms which deepens during the same period, is suggestive of the downwelling nature of Kelvin waves. The waves further propagate along the eastern boundary of Andaman Sea which is confirmed by the differential deepening of 20 degree isotherms along longitudes 94E and 97E averaged over latitudes 8N and 13N are studied. The longitudes are chosen such that one represents the western part of the basin 94E and the other along the steep continental slope on the eastern side of basin 97E. It is observed that both the longitudes experience deepening of the isotherms in April and October, but the effect is more pronounced at 97E isotherms deepen by 30 m in April and 10 m in October. This is a concrete signature of downwelling in the basin and is definitely not forced locally as the winds are weaker during this period. This confirms unequivocally that the sudden burst of water into the basin through the straits, intensification of eastern boundary currents and the coincidental deepening of isotherms in April and October are the direct consequence of the propagation of downwelling Kelvin waves in Andaman Sea, remotely forced by equatorial work key jets. The evolution of vorticity in the basin is suggestive of strong shear in the flow during different times of the year and further indicates the presence of low-frequency geophysical waves such as westward propagating Rossby waves and other transient eddies. <laughs> Flora The coastal areas of the Andaman Sea are characterized by mangrove forests and seagrass meadows. Mangroves cover between more than 600 square kilometers, 232 square miles of the Thai shores of Malay Peninsula, whereas seagrass meadows occupy an area of 79 square kilometers, 31 square miles. Mangroves are largely responsible for the high productivity of the coastal waters. Their roots trap soil and sediment and provide shelter from predators and nursery for fish and small aquatic organisms. 
Their body protects the shore from the wind and waves, and their detritus are a part of the aquatic food chain. A significant part of the Thai mangrove forests in the Andaman Sea was removed during the extensive brackish water shrimp. Mangroves were also significantly damaged by the 2004 tsunami. They were partly replanted after that, but their area is still gradually decreasing due to human activities. Other important sources of nutrients in the Andaman Sea are seagrass and the mud bottoms of lagoons and coastal areas. They also create a habitat or temporal shelter for many burrowing and benthic organisms. Many aquatic species migrate from and to seagrass either daily or at certain stages of their life cycle. The human activities which damage seagrass beds include waste water discharge from coastal industry, shrimp farms and other forms of coastal development, as well as trawling and the use of push nets and dragnets. The 2004 tsunami affected 3.5% of seagrass areas along the Andaman Sea via siltation and sand sedimentation and 1.5% suffered total habitat loss. Fauna. <inaudible> 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 The sea waters along the Malay Peninsula favor molluscan growth, and there are about 280 edible fish species belonging to 75 families. Of those, 232 species families are found in mangroves and 149 species families reside in seagrass, so 101 species are common to both habitats. The sea also hosts many vulnerable fauna species, including dugong, dugong, dugong several dolphin species, such as Irrawaddy dolphin and four species of sea turtles, critically endangered leatherback turtle and hawksbill turtle and threatened green turtle and olive ridley turtle There are only about 150 dugongs in the Andaman Sea, scattered between Renang and Satin provinces. These species are sensitive to the degradation of seagrass meadows. Coral reefs are estimated to occupy 73,364 rye in the Andaman Sea with only 6.4% in ideal condition. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Human activities. Topic: The sea has long been used for fishing and transportation of goods between the coastal countries. Thailand alone harvested about 943,000 tons of fish in 2005 and about 710,000 tons in 2000. Of those 710,000 tons, 490,000 are accounted for by trawling 1,017 vessels, 184,000 by per seine 415 vessels, and about 30,000 by gillnets. Of Thailand S total marine catch, 41% is caught in the Gulf of Thailand and 19% in the Andaman Sea. 40% is caught in waters outside Thailand. SEEZ production numbers are significantly smaller for Malaysia and are comparable, or higher, for Myanmar. Competition for fish resulted in numerous conflicts between Myanmar and Thailand. In 1998 and 1999, they resulted in fatalities on both sides and nearly escalated into a military conflict. In both cases, the Thai Navy intervened when Burmese vessels tried to intercept Thai fishing boats in the contested sea areas, and Thai fighter aircraft were thought to be deployed by the National Security Council. Thai fishing boats were also frequently confronted by the Malaysian Navy to the extent that the Thai government had to caution its own fishers against fishing without license in foreign waters. The 2004 marine production in Thailand was composed of pelagic fish 33%, demersal fish 18%, cephalopod 7.5%, crustaceans 4.5%, trash fish 30%, and others 7%. Trash fish refers to non-edible species, edible species of low commercial value and juveniles, which are released to the sea. Pelagic fishes were distributed between anchovies Stolferous SPP, 19%, Indo-Pacific mackerel Restrelliger brachysoma, 18%, Sardinellas Sardinellas SPP, 14%, Scad, 11%, Longtail tuna Tunis tongal, 9%, Eastern little tuna Euthanus affini, 6%, Trevallis, 6%, Big Eye Scad, 5%, Indian mackerel Restrelliger canagorta, 4%, King mackerel Scomeromorus cavala, 3%, Torpedo Scad, Megalaspis cordilla, 2%, wolf herrings, 1%, and others, 2%. 
Demersal fish production was dominated by purple spotted big eye, threadfin bream, hexodon, brushtooth lizard fish, slender lizard fish, and jinga shrimp. Most species are overfished since the 1970s to 1990s, except for Spanish mackerel, Scomoromorus commersoni, caringade, and torpedo scad. The overall overfishing rate was 333% for pelagic and 245% for demersal species in 1991. Cephalopods are divided into squid, cuttlefish and mollusks, where squid and cuttlefish in Thai waters consists of 10 families, 17 genera and over 30 species. The main mollusk species captured in the Andaman Sea are scallop, blood cockle granosa, and short-necked clam. Their collection requires bottom dredge gears, which damage the sea floor and the gears themselves and are becoming unpopular. So, the mollusk production has decreased from 27,374 tons in 1999 to 318 tons in 2004. While crustaceans composed only 4.5% of the total marine products in 2004 by volume, they accounted for 21% of the total value. They were dominated by banana prawn, tiger prawn, king prawn, school prawn, bay lobster, thenus orientalis, mantis shrimp, swimming crabs and mud crabs. The total catch in 2004 was 51,607 tons for squid and cuttlefish and 36,071 tons for crustaceans. The sea's mineral resources include tin deposits off the coasts of Malaysia and Thailand. Major ports are Port Blair in India, Dewe, Malamayan and Yangon in Myanmar, Renong Port in Thailand, George Town and Penang in Malaysia, and Belawan in Indonesia, the Andaman Sea, particularly the western coast of the Malay Peninsula, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands of India are rich in coral reefs and offshore islands with spectacular topography. Despite having been damaged by the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and tsunami, they remain popular tourist destinations. The nearby coast also has numerous marine national parks 16 only in Thailand, and four of them are candidates for inclusion into UNESCO World Heritage Sites. See also Andaman Islands Andaman and Nicobar Islands Gulf of Thailand Kra Isthmus Mergi Archipelago Moscow's Islands Topic References Topic Topic External Links Topic Myanmar Marine Biodiversity Atlas Online Andaman Sea Travel Guide from Wikivoyage